Hi, and welcome to episode one of my tutorial series for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. I'm Icon, and this series will give you all the necessary information to enjoy this game. I'm going to go over pretty much everything this game has to offer, and I'm also trying to explain it on a basis of complete nothing, you know? If you haven't ever touched this game or similar games like that, that's the way I'm trying to explain it. We're going to go over world creation, character creation, and all the necessary things. And I'm also going to explain a lot about the keyboard configurations, because that's one thing about this game. It's like 99% keyboard control. But you get the hang of it, and it's actually better than it sounds. So yeah, before we can get started, to actually have an easy way of downloading this game and all, there's a launcher. I put the download link for that in the description box below. When you've downloaded the launcher, it looks something like that. This is a little software which just manages your data for the game. You can update the game. You can install mods there. You can also install sound packs. Really good stuff. Don't torture yourself by trying to do these things manually. The launcher is really awesome and simplifies enjoying this game alone by a lot. So I'm using the ads sound pack for this playthrough here or for the series in general. You can of course select whatever suits your taste. You just have to install it and we're then going to go over all the, the other things. I'm also playing in the experimental branch which is basically the most uh, modern or the most updated branch where a lot of functionalities are included. If you prefer a version which is stable and has fixed boundaries, you can go for the stable version. But there's probably gonna lot gonna be a lot of things in this series which isn't which aren't in the stable version, depending on when you look at this one. Okay, so that was the launcher. Let's get into the actual game. Before we can start a game, we need to create a world. These uh, buttons down here, you can control them with the arrow keys or with the numpad. Basically, generally, use your numpad. Just be sure that the num lock is uh, lit up. So we're going to create a world to play in. So your world, you press enter and then you can create a world. Over here we see the mods which are which we have available on the left side and the mods which we can which we are which we have activated right now on the right side. So I won't be changing anything except for disabling the bionics bionic professions pack, which is basically just reducing the content by a little bit. I won't be going too deep into mods today, because you know, just the game can just stay as it is here. I like these. Personally, strong recommendation on keep that disable NPC needs on because it'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, so once you have that all set up, you need to press the tab key to get into the world options. Over here, we see all the configurations our world has. We can up or downgrade the size of cities. We can change the spacing between cities. How many enemies should spawn, how many items should spawn, and so on and so forth. I'd strongly recommend you to not touch anything when you do your first world. When you play this game a while, you will get your own ideas what you want to do with your world. So let's press another time tab. And as you see here, pressing tab switches over from these things. If you ever did something you didn't want, hold down shift and tab to go backwards. It's tab for forwards, shift tab for backwards. And yeah, we finalized that world, calling it tutorial world. And that's what you need to do. Press tab one more time to tell the game we are sure we are finished. And then we get to play that world. So the next thing you need to do is to create your character. Character creation in this game can take a lot of time and there's a lot of things you can do. We're going to play with a pretty simple character, which is going to be very, very sufficient for the tutorial and also a pretty good start for your own gameplay. Okay, so we're going to go for the custom character. The other settings here, play now, will just generate a completely random character for you. Fixed scenario, well, that's nothing you need to, uh, well, I'd strongly pre recommend you to, to create your own custom character. 
try these other options out if you're out for, a, for an adventure. So pressing enter, creating your character. Enter is, by the way, always the way to get into our menus. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I promised you detailed explanations. <laughs> <laughs> so now the game loads up all the uh, necessary informations and all, and now we're in the character creations screen. So the first thing is how we allocate our points. I personally always love to go for a single point, uh, single pool allocation. Multiple pool allocation kind of like limits you how many points you can put into which segment of the character creation. Single pool creation is way easier to pull off, and you can also create way more unbalanced builds, but for a beginner, I think single pool is a lot easier, whereas um, multiple pools is really good if you want to have a balanced build and not too much of everything. But since we're new here, we're allowing ourselves to cheat a little bit. Tab to get into the scenario selection. There's a lot of starting scenarios here and they're all so crazy cool. We're going to start with the evacuee starting scenario. We have survived the initial wave of panic and achieved a relative safe safety in one of the many government evac shelters. So this is by far the easiest start that I know of, and that's where we're going to use it. Next tab brings us to the profession selection. There are really a lot of professions. You can arrow down for all of them. And as you see here, every single one of them has a own set of items, traits, skills, and a lot of uh, things. Down here in the uh, down here we see the descriptions, a little bit uh, covered by the cam. And overall the most important thing is some professions cost you points, some professions even give you points, like starting as a hobo gives you it gives you an extra point and so on and so forth. We're going to start out with the survivor. The survivor is a pretty easy start. The other option that I personally also love is the backpacker. Both of them cost zero points. The difference between the backpacker and the survivor is pretty easy. The backpacker starts with a backpack and some survival skills. The survivor starts with a smaller pocket and a couple of other useful items. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to stick with the survivor. Next tab is your hobby selection. Here's the hobby. I mean, you can consider chain smoking as a hobby in this game too, but it's more of a way to plug in an addiction to your character, which is a downgrade for your character in general. We're going to go for a pretty beginner-friendly setup, which I personally like to play a lot because it's pretty pretty powerful and gets you somewhere. So we're going to pick up the Love's, book tra Love's Books trade, our character loves reading and you will be always happy by reading. I personally love that one because reading is something you will do a lot to learn skills and therefore it's pretty cool to take that. This is really not mandatory or something like that, just a personal prefer uh, preference of mine. What I'm going to go for though is the... I'm going to take that here going to take that later. So next tab goes to stats. So stats go strength, dexterity, intelligence, and perception. There's a lot of different things you could go for, but easily explained. Strength is your HP and your damage, carrying capacity. Dexterity is your hit chance and your ranged bonuses. Intelligence gives an indication about how quickly you read and craft, and perception is about your ranged combat. I personally love to go with mods which allow stat increases during the game. But if you are playing like this one here, you will be fixed with these stats. There's no way of increasing these stats later on, as far as I know. None that's easily acquirable until later stages of the game. Let, let's put it like that. So therefore, I like to go for just one point in every segment. You can also just leave out stuff like perception for a bit or even lower it. Here, well, you know, I personally love to have a high strength because it increases bash damage, which is pretty good because bashing weapons are easy to come by. And I like to go for a high intelligence rating because it speeds up reading and crafting. I've also seen people only going for intelligence completely, but well, we're going to go for a pretty uh, even spread here. It's really hard to put that onto a general recommendation. My general recommendation here is do this 
as it fits to your own playstyle. And if you don't like the limitation, just install some mods which allow you static races later. But we're going to talk about mods in another in another segment of this uh, video series. For the beginning, I wanted to keep everything vanilla. Now, we're at the traits section. Traits are, well, as you can see here, positive and negative. We can be a fast healer, fast learner, and so on and so forth. I'm going to pick up melee weapon training as a beginning, beginning, beginning thing. This is giving you a real power up in terms of fighting. Not mandatory, but I personally love it to have a really easy start. And I'm also going to pick up night vision because this allows me to see in dark places as really good. I'm going to show you later why. And as we see now, we are in a negative amount of points. So we can actually pick more points than we can afford, but that's what our negative traits are for. So the minus three points, we're going to cover that up with a weak stomach. I'm more likely to going to throw up from food poisoning and stuff like that. I'm aiming to not be food poisoned at all. Well, you've got to have to your downsides. We're going to pick up an ugliness because, you know, social interaction in the post-apocalyptic world is not that important anymore, unless you want to play like that. And also we're going to be squeamish. We're not going to be able to wear stuff from zombie corpses without cleaning it beforehand. It's not really that much of a hassle, but I really like to pick up these three downsides because they are rather easy to, to mitigate. We're going to need a little bit more points there because we are right now at zero and there's still some skills to pick up, which I really want to do. So we're going to pick up another downside and let's say we're also going to go for some well mood swings oh why not mood swings that's pretty good and we're going to go for poor hearing as well these are a little bit more dangerous and a little bit of a greed decision if you don't want to go for the the poor hearing or the mood swings you can't just lower your stats i'm going to roll with this one so last tab here is the skills trait these are all the skills that you can learn in the game. This part here is a little bit difficult to um, invest in because basically everything you see here can be learned in game. Traits can't be acquired that easily during the game. Stats can't be easily acquired during the game. Hobbies, well, they can't be earned during the game as far as I know. And professions are also just starting things. The skills section, I personally recommend you to only invest as much as you need. Really. Because these are all things that you can come by quite easily during the game. Whereas the other things are a little bit, are either very hard to come by, traits, or impossible to come by. Anywho, we're going to start out and pick up a point in melee. That's uh, going over the uh, thing there and pressing the right key. And we're going to pick up a point in dodging. And another point, well, we're going to go for bashing weapons because I know that my first weaponry will be a bashing one. Other options here are clear. I don't want to go too deep into that. You can go for all these other things, but I, I try to stay on a certain path in this series because it's so easy to stray into side, side topics and get extremely distracted by doing so. Now, another press on the tap button, and now we see the total overview. And over here, the most important thing that I want to uh, mention there is that you can select a specific starting location. Let me move the camera for a moment. And here, this slash lets you pick up a specific starting location. So you see here at the starting location thingy that it's a random location with three variants. It's it's really were, um, a good idea to mention that because sometimes you want to have a certain starting point. Anywho, we're going to press another time tab and now we're getting asked if we're sure we're finished and let's go into the game. So due to the fact that I picked up a martial training, we, I can now pick up a fighting style. Fighting styles are upgrading your usage of certain weapons. That's the gist of it. You can also have unarmed fighting styles, but 
for our example here, I'm going to use a Screema, also known as Kali, because it's a very, very good beginner's path to go for. You can amp up a lot of fighting power out of that. The other options here are pretty cool, all in their own respect, but we're, like I said, certain path. We're picking up Kali here. Okay, use the style, yes, and now the game builds up our world. So, to make the game look as it looks on my side, we press first now Escape and check out the options. So, my setup here is as follows. I changed the temperature units and all these here to European things because I hate to go for other settings. Really, just uh, if you don't like that, go for go for it. And as usual, you're you're switching between these riders here with tab and back tab. Back tab is that shift tab press. And yeah, here with the graphics, make sure that you're using tiles and tiles in the display over map. Um, it's like, yeah, I can't. Yeah. We're using the Ultica tile set here in both scenarios and I've upgraded the font width and height a little bit to make sure you guys can read everything here better. Beyond that, the other options, well, you don't need to manipulate that much. I personally just felt like this, the temperature units are really important and enabling the tiles is super important as well. When you have changed these options, feel free to press escape, save the changes, and then press escape one more time, save and quit the game, restart the game. All these settings, 90% of the settings, if not 99% of the settings only get applied after you have restarted the game. And now, finally, after you have done these options here, one more time, just to make sure that everything's right, you've got to put up these things in a way that they are same as mine and the graphics, make sure that you're using tiles and use the Ultica tile sets to make, to get the same optics like I do, or you just put that up to your own liking. If you are using a larger font size as I do here, you really, really do well by um, changing the pixel mini maps size a little bit, but that's only if you want to go for that. I don't know your resolutions at home, but that's what you gotta do. All right, enough of that. Now we're actually in game. Welcome to CDDA. It's only 18 minutes of explanations to create a world and a character. <laughs> well, now, the first thing that I want to make sure you know is if you press question mark, you will get your key bindings. This is an awesome place to look at if you wonder what to do. It's also coming with a search function. So if you ever wonder how to do anything, press question mark and oh, just press in, type in your question, open. There you go. You see now open door and open inventory. Opening doors is mapped to O, open inventory is mapped to I. This game has basically a mapping on pretty much every key there and you can see here these are all the keys the game has allocated i'm not going to go over all of them right now that would be an insanity but i just wanted to give you uh, the let you know where to look for if you are lost and you want to check out where something is you also as you can see here add or remove key bindings, change key bindings, and there's a lot of functions which aren't bound by default, as you can see here. We're gonna go over a lot of these things, don't you worry. So, that's that, we gotta get out of here, and the first thing I wanna do is press the M button, which will open up the map. This is our wonderful world we're living in, so, if you have enabled everything like I did here, you will see those tiles. If anything went wrong, you will see an ASCII map, which will be consisting out of letters and, and, and other signs. Anywho, this is our, uh, our, our environment, and you can control this with the arrow keys or the numpad keys. And while we're looking over all these things, we see here there's another evac shelter, over there we see a motel, we see roads, we see forests. This is a very, very important thing to, to have a control over your environment. So 
Before we continue, I'll give you a brief introduction about the world in general. Imagine all apocalypses you could think of. Zombies, aliens, mutations, and all of that happened at once in one day. So the world outside is extremely deadly. There's zombies everywhere in every larger town. There's monsters everywhere in all the landscapes. Every swamp is extremely dangerous. Every forest can actually kill you because there are gigantic animals ranging from gigantic wasps and uh, mantis bugs and whatnot. So overall, the world of CDDA is very hostile. And what's even more horrible, you have only one life. So whenever you die, you're dead for good. You can't come back with a safe file unless you're willing to cheat. And I'm going to introduce this method right away from the get-go when we start out with the series, because you will invest a lot of time in your character. Believe me when I say it's going to be dozens of hours at some points, and it can be really, really annoying to just lose that to some randomness or mistake or lack of knowledge. Therefore, you can just go in your save files and copy your 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 com your complete game or copy just your save file if you are better at these things but if you just create a duplicate of the entire game folder before you start if you die you can just go back just wanted to say that you can't cheat at this game and i don't think that the, this is anything to be feeling bad about because this game really makes it hard to experience everything there okay with that other way Let's finally get moving. So our environment here is the evacuation shelter where we started out at. I'm going to talk about the user interface first a little bit before we start exploring. Now, over here we see our sidebar. Top column here, hit points of head, torso, left arm, right arm, left leg and right leg. Body parts, basically it's simple. We see how much uh, sound we do, how's our mood, pretty equal right now, how focused we are, that determines how quickly we learn, our stamina, which determines how long we can beat stuff or keep running or whatnot, our speed, our, well, movement in which direction we move, uh, well, move speed much uh, to be much uh, clear, so you, we're moving with 107 speed into the direction west now. And our stats, power, and the safe mode. I'm going to talk about the safe mode in a minute. The weariness, which is basically explaining how friggin' tired you are, heavy, heavy work. So if you shovel a dig hole, your weariness will grow. If you build some furniture, your weariness will grow, and so on and so forth. These are basically just uh, giving you an impression about that. Over here, we see where we're at. The evac shelter, A23, the weather light around you right now it's only very dark in the room not outside the date the time only depicted if you have actually a clock or wielded weapon the style we use how much pain we're in how thirsty and hungry we are how rested we feel how warm we are how how's our body weight and how much sound we're producing also a little bit of some extra notes here so what's really bothering me and that's something i can't already see is that the map is too large so we're going to use the mini map height here and i'm going to as i noted here i, I just lowered the height of the mini map because it was just too large another thing that i skipped here a little bit is this little window here this is a ascii depiction of the environment of you here so in ASCII, forests are an F, these are roads, those brown dots are the plains. This is how the game would look like without the tile sets installed. Alright, so we got also some our, our text box here, what has happened in the last couple of turns. And down here you see the uh, in the directions where the enemies are at. So down here we see a mini-map that doesn't look pretty good right now gonna be making gonna be making more sense in a second so we're inside that building moving is pretty easy you just use the arrow keys with the arrow keys you can move according to those if you use the numpad which i highly recommend to you you can also walk di diagonally with the seven nine one and three buttons just make sure numpad is lit 
Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk about are the zoom levels, because I don't like being so far away from the action. Let's zoom in. That's hidden be beneath the Z and capital Z um, key bindings. I'm going to introduce new key bindings via this screen, so you always can see the, um, the button involved. Like I said, this is going to be a long series, and well, at the end of this episode, we probably won't even left uh, won't even have left the building too much. But let's zoom in, and as you see here, we can zoom in pretty far and pretty close. And this is too close for my taste. This is my personal go-to um, perspective for buildings. So now we just walk around here, and while we're walking, we're uncovering our environment. And also you see while we're getting close to that counter, that items appear. A lot of items are not visible because it's dark right now. To change that, we can walk over to one of those windows and just walk against it. And we're letting in the light because we've opened the closed curtains. So we have now spotted a monster. The game is warning me that I've spotted a praying mantis while the safe mode is on. The safe mode basically locks your movement, so I can't move any anymore. You see, the Tides 11 thing pops up even uh, even though I'm trying to move. This is really valuable, so you don't accidentally hold down a key and kill yourself. So press, press exclamation mark to turn it off, and that's what we're going to do. And now the safe mode is off, as you can see here. The praying mantis, you see, northwest of us, we can check out the enemies in a way by pressing the oh, sec. Um, ah, here, list all items around the player. That's the that's one thing I personally love to use. Capital V. So capital V does well. This is the regular setting. First, it shows all the items in the environment, but if you press Tab, you get a overview of the monsters and we see here this praying mantis is pretty close to us not cool we also see a little bit of a depiction down there but we're going to go over to the curtains now and press the c button because you can close doors but you can also close curtains with that animals outside like the praying mantis can be very very dangerous and denying vision by closing the curtains is a very, very good thing. So we can now check out this door. You can open doors by just walking into them. And now down there we see more of that mini-map. I think I overdid it a little bit. So we're going to increase the height of the mini-map by this. Yeah, that's what I like to see. Okay. And now you see down here how our environment looks like. And let's zoom out by pressing capital Z. And you see that's the environment there. This is the map, how we know that it looks like from the overview. And this is the actual zoomed in perspective of that. But let's get back into the shelter because we're really not, not capable of surviving out there. Pressing C to close that door. And let's look around here a little bit longer. So we can now move around, use the map and all these things, but that's not enough for now. So we're moving closer to one of these lockers here. And you see those uh, three green dots here? This means that there's a lot of items there. So to check out items or pick up items, there's the, um, wait a sec pick up nearby items, small g. There's also the opportunity to, to examine nearby terrain. So when you press E, you also get access to the um, items here, or you press G. If you really just want to loot, press G. If you want to check out if you can interact in any way with the environment, like a computer or anything like that, press E. It just happens that examining does also trigger the item pickup menu here. So, item pickup menu works like that. Up here we see the list of items, flashlight, whistle, emergency jacket, and you see every one of these items has a letter fixated to it. 
And we can now pick up things by moving our with the arrow keys, the marker, you see that blue marker. And if you want to pick up something, you press either the arrow to the right. So you see that thing transforms into a plus arrow to the left, turns that again off, or you press enter, or you press the according um, letter there. So if we press G, we also enable that or disable that. These are the two methods. I personally always use the arrow, but you can also go for the direct approach by pressing these buttons. We're going to pick up the water and the protein rations. Everything else here is not that important. I just want to talk about the item descriptions here. So as we see here, let's uh, move the camera away. As we see here, there's the material, the volume, the weight, and all these things. But most important things are always found over here in the general description. The other descriptions found there, we're going to talk about these in a different episode. To know what an item actually is good for, most of the time this uh, initial description text is enough for you. So we've selected these items, let's press enter to say OK. And you see here, I pick up the wrapper with the protein ration in it, and I pick up the plastic bottle with clean water in it. Okay, pressing I for inventory shows you what you have on yourself. So we got items worn, we got our tools, we got food, so the game automatically categorizes what you're carrying around with you. And yeah, this is the utmost basic interaction. We're going to go downstairs here because that's another good thing. So going downstairs can be done differently. So. Let's see, um, down, no, descend, descent stairs. So I personally like to go for the uh, page up and page down buttons, but you can also go for these buttons. We can also just press enter while we're on that and enter always opens up this bulky actions menu, which we're going to talk about in another episode. It basically enables you to have access to pretty much everything including suicide. And yeah, for now, we're just going to descend those stairs. If you don't want to know any shortcuts, just press enter while standing above the stairs, descend stairs, and now we're going down there. And yeah, how to move, we already know. We can now enter these places and explore that a bit. As you see here, all these gray areas are depicting that it's very dark around. And we can only see that far because I picked the night vision trait. Without the night vision trait, I would be needing to go much closer to every wall to actually see it. All right. Our main point of interest in the evac shelters cellars are always the washrooms here. So let's pick up towards there. And well, sadly, we were unlucky. Quite often you find in these rooms down here medical supplies and that's the first thing that I check out in an evacuation shelter. Another thing that you can do is you can examine the toilets and you see you have water in those toilets. You can either consume it, pour it into a container or pour it into the ground. Don't interact with toilet water until, unless you know what you're doing. Just want to mention that there's also fluids in containers that can be only picked up with the examine. Uh, command here, examine nearby terrain. Okay, so let's get back upstairs and end today's episode with that. So we learned how to create a world, how to create a character, how to move around, open stuff, close stuff, and look at enemies. Picking up stuff, and last but not least, how to uh, check out what these items are. Bit by bit we're going to leave this place and even fight stuff, believe me or not, but Every one thing at a time. CDDA is a very vast and extensive game, and it's so much fun once you got your head around it. All right, I hope that was kind of helpful for you to get your first steps done. Feel free to drop your comments down below if there are any questions or whatever might be there. Ask away. Next episode, we're going to go deeper into the interaction with our environment. We're definitely going to leave that shelter for the first time, so stay tuned, I can't wait for it either. Thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed and make it more visible for everybody else, and check out my channel. I do daily content like this, and there's 
every day a new video popping up so just subscribe and turn on that notification bell if you enjoyed and also in that description box you'll not only find my preferred the uh, cdda launcher and the settings i use you also find the link to my twitch channel where i do daily streams as well and also you'll find a link to my discord community where there's a lot of like-minded gamers and last but not least be so kind and check out the links in the box down there for direct financial support your help goes a long way i'd be super delighted if you at least check them out but don't you worry watching these videos helps me more than you might imagine all right enough of that i hope to see you all on the next episode when we're going to leave that shelter and survive another day see you guys then and goodbye